What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and continue learning about Rick Mercer talking to Americans. Part 3. If you haven't seen Part 1 or Part 2, feel free to go check those out. But either way, having watched some of these interviews now, I have basically started losing hope. For some of my fellow Americans, I gotta be honest, maybe I'm being dramatic here, but some of the stuff you hear in these interviews that Rick Mercer gets Americans to say willingly, I mean, it, it goes past being funny for me. It, it's kind of disturbing in a way. I mean, I, if, especially for me, I live amongst these people, <laughs> these Americans. So uh, either way, I am pretty interested to see what Rick Mercer is going to get Americans to say today and what ignorance Americans are going to put on display for us in this episode. So <laughs> I'm just kind of mentally preparing myself. With that being said, let's take a look. <laughs> uh, we're, looks like we're at the governor, the governor's office. I don't know the governor of, of where in America, what state, but this is an American governor right here. American governor. Hi, I'm Governor Mike Huckabee of Arkansas. Oh, okay. Wanting to say congratulations, Canada, on preserving your national igloo. Thank you, Governor. Thanks for being part of 22 minutes. <laughs> you, can't, you can't tell if I'm crying or laughing right now. <laughs> <laughs> this this Rick Mercer uh, talking to Americans series is gonna make me insane. <laughs> this is an American governor of Arkansas, and uh, Rick uh, Rick just convinced him to <laughs> acknowledge Canada's national igloo. Um, yes, that's a thing. Like Americans, we have a stereotype that. Canadians live in permanent winter, and Canadians live in igloos. It's very silly, and I thought most of us stopped believing that when we got past being children, but some of our governors believe it as well, and that, uh, I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> Thank you. The most watched news team in Canada. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Canada. What is this? We are on top. <laughs> We're close to <laughs> the North Pole. <laughs> this is coming up soon. I perfect. <laughs> this is hilarious, actually. Oh. <laughs> this is a believe me, Americans. We we do not know the lyrics to Oh Canada, except for the beginning, like Oh Canada. Da, 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 da. Oh, Canada! <laughs> we just go back to that. Uh, Manitoba Dutch. Oh, yeah. Mm. Buchenstaben. Yeah, Buchenstaben for your cup of coffee. Yeah, so in, in Manitoba, because they only speak Dutch, and all the signs have to be in Dutch. It's if you want to open a Starbucks there, your sign has to say Buchenstaben. Yeah, you can put Starbucks under it, but it has to be smaller. But it has to be smaller. What? Why, why is the American acting like this is all just common knowledge? Goopenstaben, under the Starbucks. Oh yeah, I think I've heard of that. That's the other thing that this series has shown me. Th that Americans are really willing to go along with stuff that supposed authority figures tell us is true. Also, that Americans don't know much about Canada. <laughs> That's not a shock to me. And uh, sometimes the Americans even go along with it, like, pretend that they knew it all along. Like, oh, yeah, Dutch in Canada, Dutch Gubenstaben under the coffee. Yeah, I've heard of that. Like, I don't know. Okay, where are we? Where are we today? San Francisco, California. Okay. You know, when Canadians travel abroad, some things precede them. Our maple leaf. Our commitment to peacekeeping, and of course, our national anthem, O Canada. Yes. It is known, it is loved, it is respected. It is seared in the psyche of all Americans. <laughs> it's not, um, <laughs> at least the lyrics. To be, just to fill you in, for Americans, we know of O Canada as the Canadian national anthem. We know that O Canada is part of the words or the lyrics 
But that is it. Like, we do not know the lyrics to the song. Um, I know he's going to try to get Americans to sing O Canada with crazy lyrics. <laughs> You'd think that they would notice that they're a little strange. <laughs> oh, Canada. Okay. A great big empty land. <laughs> we look to America for a healthy man. I can't. I can't process this. I can't even believe this. Like, none of the Americans think this is a joke or is a little strange. Like, that in Canada's national anthem, they would say, oh, we look towards America for a helping hand. Like, that would be in the song. <laughs> no one thinks that's weird here. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, Rick Mercer is awesome, by the way. <laughs> he is so funny, and he, his delivery is so perfect, and he keeps his composure. Um, I'm looking for the Americans here to be, like, smiling or chuckling, like they, they are in on the joke, but the Americans look uh, like they don't know this is a joke. We're close to the North Pole. <laughs> They're laughing. <laughs> I get I get this. Manger. I took a little French. I think that means eat. Like we like this is saying we eat poutine. Most, a lot most Americans don't know what poutine is or know any French. I I get this one. I get the joke here. <laughs> I'd still if if I was in this special, I'd still sing manger poutine. Why not? A lovely winter dream. Wow. Oh, Canada. <laughs> you know what? If if nothing else, you gotta admire like these Americans. They're <laughs> not helping the stereotype that Americans don't know anything about other countries or stuff outside of America. But there's a redeeming factor here. The Americans are, like, very willing to, like, hype up Canada and talk about it and, and learn from Rick Mercer, who's giving them <laughs> sort of fake information for comedy's sake. Um, and at the end, the Americans are like, yeah, go Canada. You know, there's some positivity here, you know, in the ignorance. It's positive ignorance. Does that make it better? Maybe. Where are we going? Chicago, Illinois. Okay. <laughs> I, I also, it's fun that he's like, he's traveling around all of America, like to a lot of different states and cities and stuff. It's fun. Okay, Chicago. Well, we're doing a story on the fact that in Canada, there's a motion in the Canadian government to actually change the name of Canada to Chicago. Because as you probably know, uh, they're laughing. is a native term. It means uh, uh, the land where root vegetables grow. That accurately describes Canada as a nation. We're wondering what uh, people in Chicago think of that idea. Okay, this is a good one. I'm, I'm actually glad we're getting a segment like this. This is, out this is so outrageous. This is probably one of the more outrageous lies that Rick Mercer is trying to give the Americans here. Um, that... Canada is going to change its name to Chicago. If if these Americans don't like pick up that this is a joke or that something weird is going on here, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Why would they want to change the name of Chicago? That belongs to us. I think that sounds um, <laughs> oh. awkward. No, they can't take our name. <laughs> That's this is not the direction I thought this would be going. Just when I was talking about how positive Americans were. <laughs> This Chicago Chicagoan is immediately like, no, Canada can't take the name Chicago. That's not <laughs> the reaction I was expecting. That's funny. It's our name. I think that'd be pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> Great. That, I'd be honored, man. <laughs> I think we would all party. So you don't like the idea? <laughs> what? No, I certainly do not. 
Congratulations, Canada, on getting FM radio. Now, the President of the United States says he's sending in 600 troops what? into uh, East Timor. And if that doesn't do the trick, then he may be forced to bomb the mall in West Edmonton. Bomb who? The West Edmonton. They could bomb East Timor and West Edmonton. Do you think that's a possibility? Um, yeah, I mean, it could be a possibility. He's going to be forced. This is what I'm talking about. This is the part I don't understand. And it's, it's, it's concerning. All of this is concerning to me. But this in particular, when Americans are like, Acting as if they know what he is talking about? Like, this woman um, actually confirmed what he was talking about, that they should bomb West Edmonton. <laughs> she, she actually is acting like that's reasonable and that she has an opinion on it. Even though clearly it's, it's made up and doesn't exist, and she should just admit she doesn't know, if, if nothing else. You know? The fact, just the... The... <laughs> the opinions... The over-opinionatedness, or the idea that they have to have an opinion on it, um, or that they'll look dumb or ignorant, is worse than just admitting you don't know. Forced to bomb them all in West Edmonton. Do you support that? Yes, I do. Yeah. What? <laughs> yes. What? Congratulations, Canada, Canada on getting a volunteer fire station. Congratulations, Canada, on getting grade nine. <laughs> what? It... <laughs> and then again, the things they he gets them to say. Canada, got your first fire department. Good job. Nice. And grade nine, too. Finally. Finally, up to grade nine. <laughs> We're doing a story on the fact that in Canada, as in the United States, of course, there are four seasons. But all across Canada, many people believe that none of the four seasons accurately describe the two months of darkness that all of Canada experiences in July and August. So there's now a movement to, to actually have a fifth season in Canada. And, uh, and we have three names. This is good. This is good. Because this plays on the American stereotype that we have, that Canadians are always in cold. So I think um, most Americans here will make the logical leap like, eh, Canada's always in winter, like four seasons a year. Uh, so it's probably always, it's dark two seasons a year. That's probably true. Like I can see the wheels turning here. The slumber, the equinox, or the Canada. Canada. <laughs> you like Canada? Yeah. Canada. You like Canada? Canada. I think Canada is pretty cool. Yeah? Canada, definitely. Yeah, yeah make it three on Canada. <laughs> this is the name of Canada's fifth season is going to be Canada Dark. Cool. Sounds like a dark chocolate candy or something, too, <laughs> that Canada would have. No, or a season. Canada Dark. Canada Dark. There's pork for the Canada Dark. How about just calling them the Montreal Canadians? That's pretty dark. Uh, it's huh? a meatball made out of beaver. It's, they're called beaver balls. And that's our new national dish. You don't like beaver balls? I've never had one, but oh, I... Oh, there you go. Once you have one, you can't stop. Congratulations, Canada, for making beaver balls your national dish. Congrats. Congrats. <laughs> you know, there's probably some point in my life, I'm trying to think, like, I'm trying not to be too critical here of my fellow Americans. If Rick Mercer approached me on the street, and I didn't know who he was, and I thought he was a news reporter, and he was teaching me about Canada and said Canadians eat beaver meat, I might have believed it. <laughs> I'd be like, what do I know? <laughs> I'd be one of the people being like, congratulations, Canada, on beaver balls and Canada. <laughs> oh, here we go. Harvard, no! Rick Mercer on location at Her No! I'm on the edge of my seat now. <laughs> He's at Harvard University, like literally one of the most prestigious learning institutions in all of the United States, where our supposed highest intellectuals <laughs> congregate. He's going to be asking people at Harvard stuff about Canada, like people who are supposed to be very, very smart. This, this is good. This is gonna be good. 
with Mercer on location at Harvard University, where the great oh. minds and the future leaders of a generation gather in the spirit of knowledge and wisdom yeah. which permeates this campus. Yeah. Are you a student here at Harvard? Yes, I am. What are you <laughs> studying? I'm studying biological anthropology. Okay. Biological anthropology. We're doing a student reaction to the fact that the Canadian government has announced that they're going to uh, resume the seal slaughter in Saskatchewan. What do you think of that? Oh, I think that's ridiculous. I don't think there's any point in murdering seals. Are you a student? I, I like that. <laughs> you know what? I Some of these interviews, finally, I kind of like where that's a good answer. Where they're like, seal slaughtering in Canada? I don't like that. That sounds bad. I think that's a reasonable answer. Student here at Harvard? Yes, I am. And what do you study? Now, uh, of course, the fact that he doesn't know that that's a fake news story is kind of embarrassing, but uh, I don't know. This this whole thing was filmed like a, a while back. I don't know if it was so easy to just like go on the internet or pull out your, you can't pull out your cell phone and check the news and look up the seal slaughter. It's not that easy. You just kind of, I don't know, I don't know what you, read the newspaper. I, I used to, I, I think that's something people used to do. Take out these ancient scrolls, paper and read it. Newspaper, I think it was called. <laughs> All right, joking aside, here we go. Biology. Well, that's good. This is kind of a biological question. We're down here getting students' reaction to the fact that the Canadian government has decided to resume the Calgary seal hunt. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Um, I'm against it. Actually, I'm interested in conservation biology. Okay. Well, okay. what about the fishermen in Saskatchewan say you can't catch a codfish, and that's because the seals are eating all the cod? Yeah, well, uh, I guess they'll have to start fishing for something else. <laughs> well, if they don't resume the seal hunt in yeah. Calgary, what they're hoping yeah. would happen okay. is that tourists could visit Calgary and get on a boat with the fishermen and go out to the ice flows and see the seals in their natural habitat. Would you consider ever doing that? Yes, I would. We're down here getting reaction okay. to the fact that Canada is opening a university. Would you ever consider going to a university in Canada? It's our first one. Congratulations, Canada, on uh, opening a university. That's, see, that's, the seal slaughter is like, eh. Sounds made up, but okay. This is like, when he tells Americans, Harvard, like Harvard, Harvard students, like Canada just got its first university ever this year, that should raise some alarm bells. Like Americans need to, to question things a little bit more or use some critical thinking, I guess. Thanks very much. Best of luck with your degree. In Canada, because of the separatist movement, the French separatist movement in Canada, we've decided to allow Irish Canadians to vote. Do you think that's a good idea? Of course. Congratulations, Canada, for allowing the Irish to vote. Well, they oh my gosh. Vote as it stands. Uh, and this is all, this is all like somewhat insulting to Canadians in a way, because these Americans think Canada is so far behind that Canada is just getting its first university now, finally. Canada is just now letting the Irish vote. It, it, like, the fact that they think this, these are real things happening now, just, like, is, is kind of insulting to Canada in a way, or I could see it that way. Right now in Quebec because of, you know, it's, it's Quebec and they're a very different place. Congratulations, Canada, for allowing the Irish to vote. <laughs> are you a professor here at Harvard? A professor, wow. yes. Yes, here at Harvard. Yeah. Well, we're down here getting... This is a Harvard professor. Okay. In reaction to the fact that the Canadian government has decided to resume the uh, Saskatchewan seal hunt. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's, I think it's bad myself. It's yeah, bad. I'd, I'd like to see that, that stop. That's, a, that's what I would say. I'm sorry, but this whole Saskatchewan seal hunt may sound crazy to Canadians, but I am not surprised that Americans are like, ah, if you say so, Saskatchewan seal hunt, that sounds bad. Uh, <laughs> it's not... I, this may sound kind of silly, but it's not crazy enough sounding that America that I think Americans would immediately know it is false. That's that's my stance. Maybe I need to raise the bar for us a little bit, but there you go. Have you ever considered going to Regina and going on a fisherman's boat, traveling out to the ice flows and looking at a seal? I suppose that <laughs> might be a nice vacation. <laughs> and they'd go out on a iceberg. And take a tour of the seal hunt or whatever. Anyway, I think this is a good place to stop for now. Um, again, I I may say that this is kind of torturous and disheartening, but at the same time, in a perverted sort of way, I enjoy <laughs> Rick Mercer talking to Americans. It is very funny um, and sort of sad at times too. But uh, I, I enjoy this for what it is. It's very entertaining. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, 
feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on any of the interviews here today and <laughs> that'd be very funny and if you're interested in more videos like this me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture and and learning things about Canada for the first time feel free to subscribe for more and until then thanks for watching and see you next time